Hi all, this is Don Allen with another video on uh, root finding. In this one, we're only going to look for single roots without any deflation. But we're going to compare the basic iterative method that you get from having an equation of the form x equals g of x and iterating, the Stevenson's acceleration, Newton's method, and the sequent cat method, and all to solve the same problem. Uh, note two important results, and you'll see this as we go through, the number of iterations taken to find a root, and whether there is actual convergence. Okay, so uh, to begin, uh, we have all this uh, 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 equipment we need. We need the function g, and for the Newton's method, we'll use the function f equals x minus g, and then solve f f of x equal 0. Okay? Simple as that. We're going to need a starting value. We're going to have to put a limit on the number of iterations to take. That's going to be n. And, and we're going to have a tolerance to establish convergence. That is, if successive iterates are bounded uh, in absolute value, uh, the difference is bounded in absolute value less than the tolerance, we stop and say we found a root. So let's begin uh, and look at our first function. It is uh, the g of x is 0.35 times e to the x and I've asked Maple to find the solution. It's uh, 0.71663 and uh, change. Let's see what the situation looks like. We have the, uh, the line y equal x is in the previous video, and then g of x is the uh, green function, and, and um, the blue function is f of x, that is x minus g of x. Now you will notice here that the solution of the original equation and the solution for the iterations are the same, and there are two solutions. Now, from the previous uh, discussion, you probably noted that if we start here, uh, where the slope is greater than 1, we may not find a solution using the iterative method, because the spider will just spider out to infinity. But So let's just see what happens on this. Um, We'll go through this slow at first, so we need a, a starting point, and I'll take uh, 0 0.2. We'll stop the, stop the game at uh, 50 iterations. If a solution hasn't been found by 50 iterations, we just stop. And uh, the tolerance will be 0 0.0001. Okay? Now, Here's the basic iterative method, the first one we looked at, really. It's simple, and as you can see, we did find approximately the root, the 0 0.7163. Compare that above with the actual root, 0 0.71663. Okay. So we are there, but uh, you know it's off there in the in the uh, ten thousandth place. Uh, now let's take a look at the Stevenson method. It is another method that can be iterated. It sort of accelerates the convergence, as you've read in the materials. Uh, let's get to the method, not the description. And now you can see. Um, that the same value, in fact, a much more accurate value, has been found at the fourth iteration. So that's much faster, and the Stevenson's method is not any more difficult to program. In fact, I will post uh, I will post the Maple uh, worksheet for this uh, this video, along with the uh, link to the video. Now let's look at Newton's method. Now, in Newton's method, you know we need a function, and 
uh, also we need the derivative. So while I can take a derivative, and it's done right here, uh, I can take a derivative easily in Maple. If you're writing regular code, C code, or Fortran code, the derivative is not easy to take. You have to compute it beforehand. And for many functions, it is impossible to find because the function values themselves are found through other processes uh, and not a simple function formulation. And now we run the Newton's method. And I'm just illustrating here uh, that, uh, that we're looking at uh, the function f, which is x minus g of x, and setting out the initial point and the tolerances and so forth. And it has found the uh, solution at five iterations. At the fifth one, it is uh, very, very accurate. Now let's look at the secant method. This is our first quasi-Newton method that we looked at in the course. And basically what we do with the secant method is we fake the derivative by looking at a difference quotient at a nearby point to x, the nth, well, to x sub n, the nth iterate, we just look at a difference quotient. And uh, let's see how it does. So this is a quasi-Newton method. Any time, any method that looks Newton-esque, but you use something other than the derivative to approximate the derivative, it's called a quasi-Newton method. And as you can see, we found uh, the solution at the fifth iteration so it is also very fast. Now you know the order of approximation for the secant method is about 1.62, while the order of the uh, 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 Newton's method is of order 2, so technically it's a faster method. And uh, you'll also notice we got a better solution than the secant method finds. And uh, However, the Stevens's method found it in four iterations. This, this doesn't always happen. And what I want to do now is show you what would happen if we took a different starting value. Remember, in this problem, there are two starting values. So suppose I start here uh, past that second root. Suppose I start at 1.5. There's nothing that says we can't do that. So I'll do right in here where it says the original x naught. I'm going to put in 1.5. And we're going to run all four programs, all four methods again. This time you see the initial value is 1.5. Let's look at the basic method. Well, as you, can, as you would expect, because the slope of the function g is larger than 1, it shoots it, shoots it way out of range and uh, overflows the, uh, uh, the accumulator. And so we check for that and then say it's not converging. But what about the Stevenson's method? Oops, uh, let's get down to the method. And oh, it found a root. This time it's 1.349. It found that other root. Remember, in this problem, there are two roots. There's one right about here, which looks like uh, it's right in there at one point, actually 1.3, uh, maybe between 1.3 and 1.4, because here's 1.5. And, uh, and there it is, 1.349. Now let's try Newton's method. We're doing all the same stuff. Now in four methods, uh, four iterations, it's uh, also found 1.3497. Uh, now let's take a look at the secant method. It found it in five iterations. The moral of the story here is that um, the basic and most primitive method, the iteration method, is while the cheapest to program, is almost always the least reliable. So you want to try and use a sophisticated method. I strongly support uh, quasi-Newton methods because it involves, uh, it does not involve computing a derivative. 
Uh, let's look at the next example. Okay, our next example is to look at uh, uh, the function x minus 1 minus the tangent of x minus 1 and to uh, see what the iterative method does. And uh, let's check it out, what things look like. Now, what's what? The line y equal x is in blue. The iteration function g, which is the quantity x minus 1 minus the tangent of x minus 1, is in green, as you can see here. So the solution is at like 0.21 like right here about 0.2 and the actual function that we'll be iterating with Newton's method is in red and that it passes crosses the x-axis at exactly the same point so you can see that now what we're going to do is uh, is um, set things up start at 0.2 Point 0.2 is really, really very close to the root. See, the root is 0.21, and we're going to start at point 0.2. Okay, so let's just do that and see what happens. What happens is that uh, you should be able to see here that the iterates uh, go from 0.229 to 0.200, 0.229 to 0 0.200 and so on. If it is converging, it is converging very slow. If you look throughout the iterates here, you see that in 0 0.229, 0 0.200, 0 0.229, 0 0.200. In fact, earlier I ran this thing uh, uh, almost 300 iterations and it still didn't converge. And uh, so this is an example. If you if you start computing the spider plot for this, you'll see that the spider plot will bounce around, uh, as in the example from the previous video. Let's take a look at Stevenson's method. Ah, we found the uh, the um, solution, the fixed point. Uh, after just uh, three iterations, and that's very good. Okay, that says that should tell you that um, the Stevenson method does accelerate convergence quite a lot. In fact, if we run Newton's method now, you'll see that uh, the convergence is also in three steps, and it is uh, naturally very fast. But remember, in Newton's method, you have to compute a derivative and very often you won't have a derivative that you can compute. Now in looking at the secant method we see the solution once again is found in uh, two steps, uh, three steps rather. So let's just change where we start and see if things get better. Okay. Let's just change our starting point say to 0.5. Now let's bump up the uh, number of iterations we'll allow to 250 and see what happens. Okay, we have to enter the data and set up the variables. Now let's run the basic iteration method. As you can see here, we're bouncing around again between uh, 0.17 and 0 0.25, 0 0.17, 0 0.125, and even after 250 steps, we don't see uh, improvement. If we use the Stevenson's method, four iterations is all it takes and we have found the root once again. In using Newton's method, uh, we find the solution in four iterations and uh, uh, for the, C uh, the secant method, once again, we find it in four iterations. What I'm going to do now is uh, bump up the, uh, I mean, make the tolerance smaller. So we're going to have, we're going to make it, uh, um, it has to be within a millionth. Let's see, we, this one won't work, of course, and we're getting the same answers as before. Uh, it, this oscillation between 0.17 and 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0.25, 0
Let's try the Stevenson's method. Ah, look what's happened now. In fact, it blew up. It cannot get the accuracy because something has happened uh, with the denominator in the calculation. The denominator became zero. Let's take a look at the Newton method. Newton's method. Five iterations and we found the root. So now you see some comparison between three methods, the Newton method, the Stevenson method, and the basic iteration method. And finally, let's wrap it up with the CCAT method, which finds the solution in uh, six iterations to that very high tolerance, by the way. In this uh, last example, we're going to look at uh, another simple function. Uh, we're going to iterate on x uh, to cosine. Okay, and here we see the solution is going to be 0.73. Let's look at the plots. The blue one this time is the function um, cosine of x, and you'll see it intersects with the line uh, y equals x right here at about. 0.73. The uh, function x minus cosine x is shown here in green and you'll notice that where uh, the blue and the red that is g and x intersect is exactly where uh, the function itself x minus g is zero. So let's see what these do. Now what I want you to notice is that at the solution the derivative of the uh, function g, that is this function, cosine of x, is almost equal to 1. So that's going to cause a slow convergence. I'm going to get the tolerance back to where it was. We're going to start here at uh, 0.5. Okay, the slope will always be less than 1, less than or equal to 1. So let's see what it does on the basic method. It found it, but it took 22 iterations to find it. That's a lot of iterations. Let's take a look at the Stevenson's method. Very quick, once again. When it works, it really, really works. But it can go screwy on you. How about the Newton's method? Three iterations, and we have found the solution. And finally, the secant method. Three four iterations for the CCAT method. It is a little slower, but it's uh, computationally much uh, less demanding. And of course, you don't have to compute a derivative. It does that automatically by putting in the difference quotient. Let's just change the tolerance here and see what happens. The tolerance we change up here. And let's make it, again, very small. And now, how is this basic iteration method going to do? It took 34 iterations at this, this case. Not terrific. How about the Stevenson's method? Four iterations with that very high tolerance. Newton's method, four iterations with the tolerance 10 to the minus sixth. And the secant method, five iterations. Once again, a little slower. So you can see this cross comparison. It's always instructive to look at various methods trying to do the same thing. In most of these problems we've looked at, there is only one solution uh, to worry about, at least in in the range that we're considering. And so we don't have to con concern ourselves too much with deflation here. What we're doing is looking at rates of convergence, speed of convergence, and if there is actually any convergence. Thank you.